Hey everyone, this is Joseph Blanchett, aka Legendary Frog, and this is my first commentary for one of my classic cartoons. And uh, I think the first commentary I've ever done on my own. So hopefully this goes okay. Um, so this is One Ring to Rule Them All 2. I decided not to do the first one because it's only about two minutes long. So I'll probably talk a little bit about that one as well. But um, yeah, this is uh, the first sequel I did. Um... I obviously decided to expand on it a whole bunch since the first movie. Since the first movie was just like a gag me and my friend Dustin had on our way home from uh, like F Fellowship of the Ring. Um, you know, the one trampoline to rule them all, I think is what the joke was in the uh, making of video. And um, it's something I never really addressed is that Sauron looks nothing like Sauron in the movie. Um... When I was drawing that, I was just just drew a guy in kind of generic armor, and uh, when I decided to do this, I just um, made it look a little bit better. I mean, obviously, looking back now, it's like all it's kind of hard to look at. I I, I don't really go back and watch my old cartoons that often. Um, not that I'm not proud of them, but just things stick out a bunch a lot more, like how the characters move and um, some of their shading, like. Like, uh, the gradients and all that stuff. I get picked on a lot from my friends about the gradients. But, um, you know, this was, what, 15, 16 years ago, so... I cut myself a little slack. Yeah, Frodo and Sam here. Um, so when I made this movie, The Two Towers had just come out. But Return of the King was still, obviously, a, a, a year away. Um... And this movie is a parody of Return of the King, by and large. So uh, this is all from the books. It might not have been possible. Like it, it might have been possible that people watch this movie, who have only seen the movies, saw this and like were kind of spoiled. <laughs> but what would happen in the movie because they haven't read the books? But um, I don't remember exactly why I chose the end of. The, the Lord of the Ring books to, to parody, but um, it was probably just because that's where that's where Sauron died, and uh, there was a fight with Gollum. I thought would be pretty fun. You see, here's the Two Towers revised edition because Peter Jackson just completely took stuff out of Two Towers and put them into Return of the King. Oh, and here we have a, a random, a random parody that has nothing to do with Lord of the Rings or anything. S something that I kind of look back on, and uh, I mean, this I, I don't regret doing. But um, as I make movies these days, and as I, if you might not know, have been writing and working on One Ring Rules and All Four, um, I've kind of moved away from humor like this. And some of my friends think that's a good thing, and some people think it's a you kind of what made the old movies charming is stuff like this, but I, I don't tend to think like that. Um, what was that poster in the background? It was some sort of meme before memes really existed. I don't know. Oh, we had a little cameo from Luke D'Aiora back there. Um, popped up during the chase scene. I guess we were friends when we were making this because I decided to put cameos. It's like the, the making of one ring uh, mockumentary I did. Just had a bunch of uh, Flash creator cameos in it. And it like just... Someone on Twitter said... And Twitter didn't exist back then. Uh, someone on Twitter said... Um, it's, like a, it's like a snapshot of the Flash microcosm in uh, the early 2000s. Um, in that case, like Eagle Raptor has, has gone on to do... You know, really big things uh, with a uh, gang grumps, and uh, he's in a band with um, Ninja Sex Party, which I am not envious of, but that's like really cool. So I, I love love Ninja Sex Party. And who else was there? Um, Pig Anjo, uh, John Richie Zerbies. Um, I think I think John does let's plays on YouTube. Um, I'm not sure if Richie still still does animation stuff. 
And then we had Waterman. I'm not sure what Waterman's been up to. And then, then Luke again. I must really love Luke. I put him in everything. He even said, hey Luke, you want to be, be Link? I guess I had a main crush on Luke. I haven't been paying attention to the movie here. So yeah, I think this was the Simpsons gag. <laughs> um, which is I got accused of a lot. Especially this one. Uh, um, there was an episode of the Simpsons. I forget the context, but they were trying to convince... It was a, uh, a Sideshow Bob episode, I think. Where they were trying to convince Homer that Sideshow... That... that Sideshow Bob, I'm sorry, um, was going to kill Selma, I think. And um, they go through almost all the same beats as that, like a slideshow and like a puppet show, I think, at one point. And um, I did that stuff just because I thought it was funny, so uh, I just wanted to pay homage to it, not really thinking that I was like ripping off things, you know. Um, like in All Your Pie, when the uh, Daniel Plan pops up. During that one sequence, um, you know, it was just because I, I think it's funny. I was trying to steal jokes, but you know. So what's this? What's going on here, Billy? Billy was um when I was learning Flash at my job. Um, Billy was the character that was in like a kids orient oriented uh doctor a software I was working on. Um, so I just basically took the basic design of Billy, kind of made it more my own style, and, um, <laughs> put him in this old-timey movie. Even though, it's, you know, he can be any little kid with a striped shirt, or whatever. I guess this character doesn't have a striped shirt. Oh, here's a slightly, um, <laughs> a joke that I probably wouldn't do today, that the kid, uh, Spying in the girls' locker room. That's another thing I noticed a lot in these movies. There's just some types of humors that um, I, I just wouldn't do today. Um, at least not to the same extent. So I had some friends ask me where the hippie elf chicks came from. And obviously they came from this movie. But this is a real song by... Um, Leonard Nimoy about hobbits. And it's really weird. And they had a bunch of 70s looking people that, um, you know, dressed up as elves and with, with that same sort of, like, sweatshirts. It was just a random thing I put in there. So I, I try to, t I, I, sometimes I try to take, like, just all elements of something, even if they were obscure, and, like, put them in these parodies if I can. And, uh, that's where that came from. Yeah. Even though this premise was ripped off from The Simpsons, the, uh, <laughs> the little characters that came up with here obviously aren't from The Simpsons. One thing about Sauron, whenever he zooms in, like, it's <laughs> the character, like, other stuff on the screen either pushes off to the side or gets gets smaller and like it's like he just breaks all the rules so he can zoom in like that. Oh, does he get it? I don't think he gets it. I guess I missed the scene where uh, Wayne here starts starts talking and he has a completely different voice in the Goblin in the first movie. I kind of retroactively made it a different character in the first movie, but in this one he we kind of um, give a reason to why his voice is all raspy. And it's just that he had a I guess he had a cold. Schmeagle. The thing about these movies is for the most part I did my own voices. Um, one ring Kind of like, unlike most of my other movies, I kind of did all the voices for. There's a character here and there that I didn't. Um, in like one case in The Hobbit where I probably should have voiced a character, but I, I, just, I, I didn't. So, uh, not the best Gollum impression, but um, you know, who else was I going to call? 
Linko. Why don't you cross your gauntlet there? Look how happy he is. Looking back, I uh, really like the golem head, about how like one eye is like kind of happy looking, and the other eye is uh, all angry looking. Because um, I try when I'm updating these characters for One Ring Four, you know, I wanted to keep that uh, that look, and like I couldn't quite get it right, and it took a lot of work to kind of get it to mimic this old style, ironically, in, into a modern one. Because his, like, um, his asynchronous eyes are kind of, like, part of the character. I'm noticing a lot of bad-shaped tweens with his eyes. Um, s some stuff that I... Even if I did shape tweened eyes today, which I'm not, uh, I probably could have, um, taken some care of. Oh, there's Kerrigan. Hello. Some people, even back in the day, realized that the lava sound effect I used from, was from Super Metroid. You see, like, uh, Wayne's eyes are all, are all shapes. I'm, I'm talking about Flash stuff that most of you won't even be interested in. That's why sometimes when their eyes get a little bit, um, get a little bit messed up, it's because it's a certain Flash technique. So you might have noticed earlier that Leonard Nimoy's mouth wasn't moving. And here we have um, these torches not moving. Uh, Leonard Nimoy's mouth not moving is actually a mistake on my part. I meant to splice in a fixed version, and I <laughs> I might not do it at this point. But um, yeah, I did not have a complete version of this cartoon anymore in my backups, and the um, the file I used to host on like Newgrounds and stuff must have been protected, and uh, I couldn't convert it, so I went through a lot of different ways to kind of merge the two together using a bunch of different means, so I accidentally left a scene where um, there's no lip sync, and that's also why the torches don't move, because it's because of the way I converted it. Um, here's another joke that I wouldn't have done, making a joke at the expense of, uh, of Liv Tyler, is that her name? Uh, being like a porn website. Yeah, I wouldn't do this today. One of my friends say it's harmless. And I kind of agree, but, you know, I wouldn't do it today. But, um, that's about it.